Hey guys, welcome back to my channel today. In today's video, we are going to be ranking some of the best high-end eyeshadow formulas from worst to best. Now this is insanely hard for me to do because as you guys know, I am a high-end and luxury channel. This is literally all I do. I review this category and I feel like I'm very familiar with it. There are a lot of really awesome high-end eyeshadow formulations out there and they are truly unique, so they all do offer something different to the market. However, there are some formulations that I pick up more than others. So if you guys want to see me kind of struggle through this, <laughs> because all of them are insanely good formulations, but we're gonna rank them anyway, because there definitely is a winner, then just keep watching. All right, guys, let's get right on into it. I do have 12 eyeshadow formulas to talk about. These are all brands that I have tried multiple palettes from. So it's not just one palette and then I've made my decision up. There are definitely multiple palettes involved in making this decision, but eyeshadow formulation number 12 is in its rightful place because I actually don't really find myself super excited about this brand, the launches that they do, not something that catches my eye really, and there's a lot of repetition in this brand as well. In number 12th place, we do have Huda Beauty, and this is the only Huda palette that I have in my collection now. This is the Huda Beauty Gold palette. I believe it was a Cult Beauty exclusive, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if it's still there now, but I'll have to take a look and double check. Now, this is the only palette that I have in my collection for a reason. This brand as a whole, even though it has a very consistent eyeshadow formulation in my opinion, the mattes are really nice and lightweight. They do tend to build nicely on the eye. There are a lot of similar shades palette over palette though. This isn't totally something that just Huda is responsible for or anything. Lots of brands do this. Matte pinks, matte beiges, matte peaches. We see a lot of that in her formulations and a lot of them in her palettes. Gold is truly unique because gold has a lot of topper shades in this palette, which is why I've kept it around. But the other Huda Beauty palettes I have since decluttered quite a while ago, just because I wasn't reaching for them. So this is definitely a nice consistent formulation and it's only been in my collection for a small amount of time, but so far this has stayed around because it does offer me some creative outlet to really have some gold top coats, which are some of my favorites in my eyeshadow collection. So Huda Beauty, like I said, she does for the most part offer a consistent formulation. There have been some duds along the way, which other brands do that as well. But this is ranked number 12 simply because of my personal excitement for the brand brand really isn't one that I find myself super excited about when she releases something new. Now eyeshadow formulation in the number 11 spot is actually Urban Decay. Now Urban Decay does also deliver a fairly consistent product as well. Like I said, there's going to be some duds in these brands here and there. So do subscribe to my channel because I review all sorts of these palettes and I will definitely tell you when I come across a dud. <laughs> But number 11 is Urban Decay because this one to me is also a brand that I do get more excitement for than Huda, which is why I placed it in number 11. And in particular, there is a new palette coming out called Naked Wild West. I will leave a picture here in the video to show you guys. It is a product that I've ordered because a lot of you guys want me to review it. So this is a color story that's definitely a little bit different. I will say though that I think we've seen color stories like this in the past. It's not totally unique or anything but the fact that this is a really cool outer packaging, a really nice color story with some light and some depth to it. I'm pretty excited to review it for you guys. Urban Decay is great because they do offer a really nice matte and shimmer formulation. It is very user-friendly. I think it is very basic as well, so you don't need a ton of skill to really make a look come together from one of their palettes. For instance, you do see a very gradual, you know, from the light all the way to the deep with these palettes. It's kind of like a nice gradient. A lot of their palettes are situated like this just because they do recognize that Urban Decay being more so mid-range when it comes to price, you do have all sorts of makeup users that are using this brand. So the mattes are very reliable. I do find that they build on each other well and they layer well to have a maximum pigmentation of about medium to full, I would say, for opacity. The shimmers are great too. Expect a little bit of fallout, but certainly not as much as some other formulations, which we will talk about. The Naked series of this brand has been very dependable for a lot of people. Naked Heat is the only 
only palette here in my collection because it's a very beautiful sultry palette. Lots of nice, I guess, spicy looks, which makes sense from the name, but Urban Decay is number 11. Now brand number 10 is actually one that I revisited recently in kind of my makeup testing, if you will, and that is Chanel Beauty. Now Chanel has a very interesting outer packaging with all of their eyeshadow palettes. For the most part, we have this kind of quad effect. They have released some other palettes along the way that are more like rectangular pans and things like that but this is kind of what they're usually sticking to, which is the quad. Interestingly, these almost kind of appear to be more of like a baked formula because they do have that really interesting spherical kind of shape in pan. This is a palette from last year's holiday. It is, let's see, what's it called again? Candor and Provocation. So this is one of the palettes that kind of made me fall in love with the formula again. And because of the sheeniness of these shades, I do feel like they glide over the lid beautifully. No matter what age you are, I think that you can really offer some nice nice glowy looks with these palettes. I actually do have two new Chanel quads that I had to order all the way from the UK, but these are them here. So I am going to be reviewing these as well on my channel. We do have Golden Meadow in my right hand, your left, and then we have Bouquet Ombre, which is in my left or your right side. So these are the new quads here, but you can see that Chanel definitely offers a consistent warm palette option usually. So you can definitely get some warm palettes from this brand. They do offer the occasional cool tone palette, which does help. I know a lot of people would like a cool tone palette and sometimes don't get that. Chanel has been around for quite some time. So if you do want to try out a Chanel quad, I do think it's among the best in the industry, but compared to other formulas, it is number 10. I want to pay homage to one of my favorite shadow formulations as well, but it's also one that's kind of losing some steam in the recent years. And the formulation in number nine is Too Faced. Now Too Faced, you guys, in my opinion, also delivers a consistent formulation. However, you need to make sure that you're buying an appropriate palette style because they do have some interesting palettes in cardboard packaging. Their holiday palettes haven't been the best. So stick to the tin packaging for your best chance at their best formulation. But the only palette palette that I have in my collection right now is Pumpkin Spice. This was actually from this year as well, or last year, sorry. And it has a really nice versatile color story, but this is a beautiful Too Faced formulation. The mattes in here are really nice and creamy as well. I feel like they glide over the lid beautifully. They build up beautifully. Expect a bit of fallout with this as well. The shimmers too, they do have a bit of fallout, but they pack that really bright pigment punch to them. So this is a lovely one. I love the diversity. I love that you can blend out the edges easy and that helps with beginners wanting to have a fun palette to try eyeshadow with. The thing with Too Faced is the scented palettes thing. Oh my goodness. I'm kind of over it, to be honest. It's kind of something they've always been doing. This is definitely a palette that it's lost its scent, which I'm kind of thankful for, but they do start off fairly potent. And sometimes the scents stick around for months and months and months. They're very sweet, artificial smelling. So just keep that in mind. I do think it kind of plays to a younger demographic with that, but I do have a lot of friends that are older than me and my age that enjoy the palettes too, because the consistency of formula with these tin pans makes for a beautiful eyeshadow look. Now palette formulation in number eight is actually one that belongs to another high fashion house makeup brand and this is Dior Beauty. I'm gonna preface this by saying that you must buy the five cooler palettes in order for this to make the best of the best in the industry. I've talked about this before on my channel. There are some duds in this line, but other lines I feel like have, you know, some duds where a few shades don't work out and it's kind of like, well, that sucks. You know, some shades still do, but the Dior ones like really don't work out if you pick the wrong palette. <laughs> so definitely stick to the five cooler ones. This is actually for spring 2021 from their Pure Glow collection. This is Pink Sakura. I believe it's still on Dior's website. I will link it if I can. This is a beautiful purple color story. I did do a review on this channel also for this one, but this one has a nice sheeniness as well. I feel like it has a little bit more of a thinner consistency versus Chanel. Chanel to me is a slightly heavier formula. This is one that is a little bit thinner yet. So I do feel like you have to build it up to get the full opacity on the lid. But once you do, it stays put. It doesn't fade. It's so, so nice for that. These Dior palettes often offer some really beautiful finishes. So we have some sheeny ones here, some satins. We have a beautiful top coat. We have some 
mattes, we have metallics, so they do offer a lovely variety of textures. Let's talk about the palette formulation that I picked for number seven. So we're almost halfway. We're really getting to splitting hairs here. This is definitely some of the best formulas in the high-end category right now. So number seven is Marc Jacobs Beauty. Now I do have two palettes here that I wanna show you because one of my favorites right now is Extravagance. And this I believe is kind of getting phased out. I believe it's limited edition and starting to kind of sell out stock places. So I figured I would share this one first because you guys know I've been talking about this forever. I love this palette for beautiful metallic Great Gatsby vibes, kind of like old Hollywood, so to speak. So it's very, very beautiful. I like this palette more than the holiday palette this past year. And this is actually among the favorites, even from the permanent line. So if you happen to get this palette, do treasure it because I do think we're never gonna see it again once it's gone. But this is a gorgeous color story. I absolutely love this one. But in case you can't get this palette right now where you are from, I'm going to pull out a really beautiful palette from them, which is from the permanent collection. This is Glambition. Now Glambition is one that I do think is very everyday friendly. You can see here that there's some shimmers and mattes, but nothing too crazy metallic or too crazy loud. This brand is capable of doing so much. Just like I shared in the Extravagance palette, there's some beautiful metallics in this line, beautiful creamy mattes that I think, thinking about all the mattes that I've worked with, like Marc Jacobs has a matte that I think is super easy to work with. Now you can see here that Glambition has barely been touched because I've really gotten on with the Extravagance palette and also some other ones that have been discontinued now. But you can see that there's a wide range of light to deep here with regards to shades. So you can add some light, you can add some depth. They're so creamy and they're just so easy to work with. I can't even explain how they just blend themselves. The shimmers too are really great and Fallout is extremely minimal. So this is definitely a brand that I think you guys should check out if you haven't. I think it's also fairly underrated in the category right now and they offer some beautiful color stories. Now let's talk about the palette formulation in number six position and this is Tarte Cosmetics. Now I have to talk about them because Tarte is something that's also been extremely consistent over the years with the exception of the holiday palettes. Just stay away. <laughs> Some of them are truly, truly bad, but this is my latest kind of discovery from Tarte. And I did want to include this in a video because it's their newest palette with the Amazonian clay formulation, which is definitely the best Tarte product. This is the Juicy palette. I'm actually wearing it on my eyes right now. It's super easy to put looks together. You can see it's a bigger size than the typical Tartlet palette. I am one that always likes to take into account the beginner because even though I am someone that tests makeup all the time, I feel like I'm sharpening my skills all the time. I would never say I'm perfect at it, but I do think that, you know, as you play with makeup, you do get better. I always remember where I started and how overwhelmed I was when I looked at all sorts of eyeshadows in Sephora. And this is one brand that I consistently recommend to people that have no idea what to do. The reason for that is simply because of how easy this brand makes eyeshadow. You can't go wrong. And in fact, it actually builds confidence so that you can tackle some different formulations and feel like you at least have some skill down, right? So this is a beautiful example of what Tarte can do. There's some beautiful mattes in here and there's some beautiful shimmers in here. Some of the shimmers translate in this palette to be more top coat-like. For instance, the maximum pigmentation is actually applied with a finger. But this is a beautiful palette that I would like, honestly, I give this as a Valentine's gift to someone that has no idea what to do and someone that is an expert because it's just that good. Now Tarte does have a slight sweet smell sometimes to their formulations. It's kind of like vanilla-ish or like a sweet sugary smell. So just keep that in mind. But the Amazonian clay formula, the original Tartlet palette is great. Do pick up a permanent palette from them because that's, I think, their best formula that they have. Really, really beautiful. So this is palette formulation number six. Now that we are at the top five, which I'm pretty excited about, and this also gave me some stress, <laughs> I'll be honest, trying to put these five in order based on my preference was very difficult. But palette formulation in fifth position is actually Anastasia Beverly Hills. Now I had to talk about this brand here because of the fact that these are some gorgeous long lasting shadows. I will say 
Soft Glam is one of my favorite palettes. I'm going to also talk about Sultry today because Sultry is a beautiful one. I love how cool toned and kind of glamorous this one is, but I think this is discontinued now, so I don't want to spend too, too much time on this. But the biggest downfall of the Anastasia formula is the fallout. This to me is probably the most fallout in a single eyeshadow formulation in this countdown. So I strongly recommend that you do your eyes first with this. That is just my preference. I've heard of others not really experiencing that as much. I don't know, kudos to you guys because I can't seem to not have any fallout with this brand. The reason why this is so strong in my countdown as well is also because of the creaminess of the mattes and the beautiful shimmer impact of these shimmers. Some of them are not quite metallic. They're just beautiful, shimmery, like so, so blinding, almost like they have a highlight effect to them, but they're just really, really beautiful. But I feel like this is a palette that so many brides use and for good reason, because look at all those beautiful shimmers. I've almost hit pan on some of them. You can't quite tell, but <laughs> that top row of the shimmers is definitely my favorite. We also have some beautiful browns in here to really anchor any look, but this is a beautiful palette that you can translate from day to night super easily. So number five is Anastasia for good reason. They are beautiful, beautiful shadows. Let's talk about the formulation in number four. Now number four belongs to Tom Ford. Tom Ford is very consistent. I will give him that. He is very, very consistent when it comes to these quads. Now I've talked about in my best eyeshadows from my favorite brands video, which I will link in my description box if you haven't seen it. My favorite from him has to be Honeymoon. Honeymoon is just so incredibly beautiful and this formulation is different because it has almost a light gelness to it and gives you that beautiful kind of like glazed look. It's hard to explain, but it's just one that camouflages imperfection. The, sh the colors of these tend to be a bit more muted. So if you're wanting something really loud with color, like bright, 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 you might not get it with this because they tend to have that sheeniness and that shine that has that presence more. Of course, they are still pigmented is what I'm trying to say, but they're not like boom color, if that makes sense. They really just emphasize your eyes and bring that beauty to life. Kind of hard to explain, but you know what I mean. <laughs> kind of cheesy too, right? How I'm describing it. The eye color quads from Tom Ford are just bar none, some of the best in the market for sure. And they are a luxury price point. So I'm glad that they do deliver when it comes to quality. There's some beautiful shimmers in here, some sheeny ones, some satins, gorgeous, gorgeous color story for that beautiful date night look. If we ever get to go out again, that is. <laughs> it has a gel like beauty to it. That's just so lightweight on the eye. It doesn't crease. This is one that is thin, like thin, thin, but just so smooth and beautiful. We are down to the last three. I'm super excited. Palette formulation in third place has to go to Charlotte Tilbury. Now I have two of some of my favorite palettes from her right here. The first one is the Bejeweled Eyes to Hypnotize, which is her most recent holiday palette. The reason why this one I think is one of the best that she's done is simply because of how different some of these shimmers turn into when you add a wet brush. So if applied wet to some of these, all of a sudden it's just metallic, foiled, beautiful. It just like amps that up just a little bit more. So she really likes to emphasize your your own eyes and your own beauty by adding some beautiful pigments that just have that versatility of a beautiful gleam to the eye. You can also see that she has these trios in her palettes. So especially in the 12 pans like this, it's very easy to put looks together. You'll find that she doesn't have a ton of big jumps in her color stories. She tries to keep it pretty basic that way. She offers a ton of beautiful pinks, which if you know Charlotte, you know that's true. And she does offer a beautiful everyday friendly formulation two. This is one of her newest palettes and this is in Star Aura. Now how I'm going to describe this one is definitely your eyes but better. So this is a very beautiful easy formulation and I know a lot of people talk about pillow talk but I'm going to showcase this one because it is super everyday friendly but this is one that's going to emphasize your natural beauty. It is not going to be a loud eyeshadow look whatsoever. So overall, Charlotte does have a great consistent formulation. I'm trying to think if I've ever had a dud from her and I really can't think of something like right off the top of my head that was a colossal disaster from her. She definitely offers a consistent formulation and I love the fact that she's trying some different things here and there, but when it comes to her eyeshadow, expect creamy mattes, beautiful shimmers, 
and everyday friendly looks that just really amp up your own natural beauty. All right, guys, the eyeshadow formulation in number two spot. Oh, it was so hard to pick, but I did. I did pick, and that is Pat McGrath Labs. Pat McGrath Labs is in number two because of her Mothership 10 Pan palettes. Super beautiful. The textures, the variations, the finishes outstanding from this brand. Now, she has some beautiful Blitz Astral shades, which are her coined special shades. Some of them are beautiful top coats that just finish the look so beautifully. Very, very thin to the touch and gel-like and smooth. And sometimes they have a shimmer component to them that can fall on the face a little bit, but the impact on the lid, this is where you get the shimmer from outer space. It's super, super beautiful. This is Divine Rose 1, by the way, in case you're wondering, and this is my favorite Mothership palette from her. She has some gorgeous mattes in here, which are very creamy. Now, this is also a beautiful palette for Valentine's or girly looks, to be honest, because it's just so, so stunning. But this is a palette to me that is absolutely phenomenal. There's a duochrome shade in here that I think is very easy to use. The shimmers are very easy to use. And then those Blitz Astral, beautiful, one-of-a-kind shades make her formulation stand out from the market. Now, I will say that the Blitz Astral quads that she released um, two holidays back now have got to be some of my favorites when it comes to finishing shades. So this is Ritualistic Rose, and I have talked about this on my channel a bit, but this is purely just her Blitz Astral shades. But do know that these tend to flake a little bit because they are so, so thin and they provide that beautiful shimmer punch. But because of the weight of the shimmer particles, it will have some fallout. A beautiful formulation and one that stands out in the market for sure. This is definitely a quad that I personally pick up a lot when I use Divine Rose for that little extra punch. But this, you guys, is super beautiful and Pat McGrath is number two. Now, there is one brand I haven't talked about yet, so you guys know that it is in number one place. This, of course, is a brand that is not without fault. They're definitely doing a lot of experimentation when it comes to eyeshadow formulation, but if you score a beauty, which I have talked about in the past on my channel, I review every single palette she does, she has some of the best, easiest to use, creamiest, opacity-wise, pigmentation, like longevity of the shadows on the market. I'm talking about Natasha Denona. Now, Natasha Denona has made some beauties over the years. We're going to talk about two of them because I do think that this one is one that you really need to get your hands on if you can. This is the Glam Palette, and I actually still get emails and messages to this day about whether this palette is coming back. So far, I haven't heard that it's discontinued. So if it is, leave me a comment down below because that is news to me. But I do think it's going to be restocked on Sephora and Beautylish soon. I did see on Beautylish that it said returning soon on their website. So do keep your eyes peeled because this is a beautiful cool tone palette for those softer glam looks, the everyday looks, maybe some night out looks. This is very, very versatile. It's definitely made my best of 2020 actually. It's just a stunning palette. So this is one I'm going to definitely let you know as soon as it gets restocked. But her most recent baby is actually this mini love story palette. This is kind of a similar vibe to her love palette, which unfortunately didn't work out for me, but this little mini definitely did. Just like Pat, she does offer some beautiful versatility with the finishes and the types of shadows that you get. But I do think that Natasha is just slightly better because if you can get a palette like mini love, or like Glam, I do think that the mattes are just slightly easier to work with, with Natasha. Now, that is again, splitting hairs and probably just my preference. Her minis are actually a great way to try out the brand because as it is a luxury price point, minis are nice to know if you are really wanting that type of formulation in your life. Gorgeous creamy mattes that are buildable and opaque. She has some beautiful shimmers as well and Fallout is next to nothing. So that is why it is so, so beautiful. Natasha Denona is number one. Let me know down below what are your favorite eyeshadow formulations and how you rank them in your collection. I'm super curious. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Until my next one, take care and stay safe. Bye guys.